the biggest thing in social media and where I see people flop really is that being anticipatory thing. We are so anticipatory with not only am I going to tell you the what, I'm going to tell you the three-step how. Cut it. Cut it. Let them ask. Let them ask the question. I'm Amy Porterfield, ex-corporate girl turned CEO of a multi-seven-figure business. But it wasn't all that long ago that I lacked the confidence, the budget, and the time to focus on growing my small but mighty business. Fast forward past many failed attempts and lessons learned, and you'll see the business I have today. One that changes lives and gives me more freedom than I ever thought possible. One that used to only exist as a daydream. I created the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast to give you simple, actionable, step-by-step strategies to help you do the same. If you're an ambitious entrepreneur or one in the making who's looking to create a business that makes an impact and a life you love, you're in the right place, friend. Let's get started. Hey there, welcome back to another episode of the Online Marketing Made Easy podcast. I am doing something very different today. This is a very, very last minute impromptu podcast episode. And here's why. I got a text message from my friend Paige Duncan. She's a PR agent and she was part of my book launch. And Paige said, Amy, have you heard of this woman? She got 30,000 new email subscribers using just three reels. I'm like, what? No, I haven't heard about her, but I need to know all the details. And so she sent me this woman's quiz. And she said, this is the quiz that tons of people have taken over a very short period of time. It went viral. And I think you need to check out this girl. And so I said, I think you're right. So what I did is I went to her website. Her name is Harley Jordan. I went to Harley's website and right across the top, and stay with me here, you can Google her, but just stay with me, I'll give you all the links. I want you to really understand the reason for this podcast episode. I went to her website and I took a quiz. And the quiz was, are you a deer, fox, cat, or bunny? What? Like what? This is silly. She must not be working with people you know, in business. This must be a different genre, which is fine. But it just was like, that's kind of silly, but fun. I'm intrigued. But I just kind of was like, what's this about? So I took the quiz and realized, oh, no, this is really valuable. This is silly and fun up front, which we're going to talk about that strategy, why she did it that way. But once you got your results and found out if you were a deer, bunny, cat, or fox, you actually learned a lot about yourself that you can using your personal life or business life. So I don't want to get into all those details yet. I'm going to talk to Harley about this, but it was intriguing to me. But of course, I teach list building and I have talked about quizzes forever and ever. I keep telling all of you, quizzes really work. And Harley is a great example of that. But I wanted to get her on a podcast because I wanted to ask her, why did you create it the way you did? What was your inspiration? You're going to laugh when she tells you what it was. And how did you do it? What software did you use? Why do you think it went viral? What did you put in your reels that made people pay attention? And what was the whole point of this? And so I asked all those questions, but why this is a little bit of a different episode is I just heard about Harley on Thursday and today is Monday. Typically with my team, we find a guest, we reach out to them, ask if they want to be on the podcast. Then my team will get on a call with them and interview them and learn about their story. From there, we'll come up with the right questions to ask. I'll review everything, go back and forth with my producer. And then we get the person on. And we have a whole system for this. Like there's a process. I broke every rule, which is, I think Harley would be proud of me because she's a rule breaker. I broke every rule. My team was not involved in this. They have no idea what I'm doing. And I'm just like, I'm getting her on. And this is timely. This just happened. I would love to just get this episode up really quickly. So you'll see a little bit of a different side of me. I'm a little more off the cuff, not really prepared, but it's like I'm just talking to a good friend, like tell me everything about what you did to have this kind of success. And Harley does not disappoint. So I won't make you wait any longer. Let's go ahead and bring on Harley Jordan. Hey there, Harley. Welcome to the show. 
Hi, Amy. I am so excited to be here. I'm, I told you I'm fangirling over this moment. Well, I'm excited to have you. So here's what happened. I got a text message from a publicist friend of mine, Paige, and Paige reached out and she's like, have you heard of this girl? <laughs> and the headline was 30,000 new subscribers with just three reels. And mm -hmm. then my friend, Julie Solomon reached out and she's like, I just heard this wild story, 30,000 new subscribers with a quiz with just three reels. And I thought, what? No, no, this cannot be true. <laughs> but you're here to tell me it is true. It is true. And you know what? The quiz is so silly. It's so silly. And that's the magic in all of this is that it's not some serious, what's the best funnel for you? It's, are you a bunny, cat, deer, or fox? <laughs> okay, we're going to get into that. Are you a bunny, cat, deer, or fox? It is silly. However, I took the quiz. For the record, I'm a cat. Ooh. And I should have asked you, what do you think I was? So I'm a cat. And we'll talk about what that means in a second. But also, when I got the results, it wasn't so silly. It was actually yeah. very affirming and very insightful. So we're going to talk about that. Everyone's going to want to take the quiz. Everyone that is listening, I'm going to encourage you to do so. But stay with me here before you go do that, because I really want to talk about list building, because that is my area of expertise. And when I hear about someone who's had massive success so quickly with a quiz, I just want to break it down. I want to talk about how this happened, yes. what it's all about. But let's back up. Tell everybody a little bit about you, <laughs> who you are, what do you do? Let's like kind of set the stage first. Absolutely. So I'm a social media strategist at this point, but really my clients look at me more like a social media therapist because what I do is really dig into the depths of their personal brand and find that thing that is so special to go online. We are really so nosy on the internet. The way I like to think about the internet is, you know, when you're walking outside at night and you might see a party going on in a house or they're watching a movie or a game's on and you're just a little looky-loo. You take a little look yes. and your head swivels. That's what social media is like. So we want to see inside your real thoughts and feelings. And that is how I really got into this space. So I'm a previous influencer agency founder. I really started working with large influencers to build their brand and have since dug into more of the thought leadership side because mm -hmm. there are so many impactful women out there that are not using their voice on social and it hurts me. Yes. Amen. Same. Like I am on a mission to help as many women as I can leave behind what's no longer serving them, step into being their own bosses, making their own money, finding nice. their own way. So you and I are a great team because you're helping them find their voices once they get out there. And mm -hmm. it's so important. So I'm right there with you, my friend, for sure. Okay. So you've been building this business. How long have you been doing this for? I've been doing this since 2020. Okay. So you came in at a great time when you had a lot of eyeballs paying attention. Yeah. There was a lot more people paying attention online during that time. And you decided to create a quiz. So first of all, why did you want to create this quiz? Oh, get ready for this. Story. Okay. <laughs> all right. I'm ready. So this bunny cat deer fox thing is actually a trend that was going around on TikTok. It was a filter based on your face shape. So this was built in Korean beauty standards. It was all based on your beauty. And I was actually having a conversation with my coach and I completely missed that point. I was like, all of my friends think I'm a fox. I'm a fox. I'm a fox. I'm a fox. And she stops me and she goes, Harley, get out of here. You're a bunny. And I was like, oh, I'm a bunny. <laughs> So this all started in such a silly way. I went to Instagram. I was like, I'm having an existential crisis. <laughs> I thought that I was a fox and I'm actually a bunny. And it's all because I valued these traits of being cunning, resourceful, intelligent, driven, you know, all of these things that society tells us that we need to do, do, do all of the go, go, go energy, all of the do more, be more. And so as I did this, I said, you don't need to know what this means. Whatever you're assuming is correct. The internet had a field day over that. They were like, I don't know what you mean. I don't know what you're talking about. You cannot assume I need a quiz, all of this stuff. Yes. So I jump into action. I'm like, that's it. 
I'm making a quiz. This is becoming this like weird brainchild of mine is becoming a quiz. So I actually had multiple conversations within my group program that week about how can we show up better as our own animal? Which animal are we? So we're all sitting around diagnosing all of these high level influencers, as specific animals. So fun. And what that could possibly mean. It was so fun. I mean, isn't everyone's favorite activity learning more about themselves? Absolutely. <laughs> That's why quizzes work. People want yes. to tell more about me. Exactly. Tell me more about me. Okay. So, so real fast, will you yes. take a quick pause? Do you mind or does it give too much away? Can you tell people a little snippet about what each of them are or would you rather oh, not do that? Okay, cool. Okay, because I really didn't even know what a fox was and I wanted to be a fox. I didn't <laughs> even know why. I okay, wasn't. Isn't I was that like, funny? Oh. It is very funny. I'm like, oh, I'm totally a fox. That sounded we very all have, powerful. We all have this preconceived notion of what's better. And the thing yeah. is, there's no hierarchy. It's just no. depending on what you are. You are yeah. as simple as that. So, okay, your cats are very decisive. They are, I do what I want, strong, independent energy. Your bunnies are creative hurricane. Like think of the bunny from Zootopia. Yes. Very strong, very like adamant, but like stumps her foot and nothing really happens. That's, that's me, I'm a bunny. <laughs> There are deer who are very introspective, very intuitive. They have this like flowiness about them, but also they have an inner strength. Think about how a deer is the only one of these animals that could total a car, right? Yep, so true. <laughs> so your deers are strong. And then you have your foxes. And those are like your chatty planners of the group, your doting moms that always have the snacks with them. They always have all of the like extra jacket. They know what to bring. They know what to wear. Okay. So those of you who are listening, you're like already deciding what you are. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Just wait a second or you can, but you're going to take the quiz at the end. I'm going to tell you where to go and what to do, but stay with me because those of you who are listening are online marketers are building businesses online. You want to learn how this worked, how she was able to grow to 30,000 plus new subscribers. That's a very big deal. Many people won't get 30,000 subscribers in a year, Harley. Because, so that's like a big deal it's to have you numbers. here, right? To talk about this. Okay. So you were sitting around and then you started talking with your team. Like, what kind of animal are you? What are you? How mm -hmm. did that turn into a quiz? So from there, I got the suggestion. I mean, I had been getting the suggestion in my comment section. All I had to do was respond. Yeah. And that's really the thing is not creating something that is so brand new and out of this world. That's not what we need. We need something we know with a little twist, something that's familiar with a little fun element added in. And that's really what I created. So I went to, <laughs> I, I think I spent hours one night just sitting on my computer thinking of the most ridiculous, girly, like magazine, Tiger Beat, cosmopolitan worthy questions that I could think of. And this is part of it, right? I want people to finish this quiz. Mm -hmm. So I have to give them the questions where they don't necessarily know what they are picking yes. from those answers. That was massively important. And also it doesn't feel that deep. Mm -hmm. We have to make it easy. We have to make it easy. If I asked you what your, I don't know, I think I do ask you what your deepest fear is in this, <laughs> in this quiz, but that's what I was going to say. If I asked you what your deepest fear is on the internet, you'd be like, Ooh, okay, yeah. scroll. <laughs> yes, exactly. The way those questions were asked were very conversational. I felt like my girlfriend, and I know you cater toward women, right? Yes. The, the gentleman can take the quiz too, right? But you, you, yeah, my husband's a fox. <laughs> okay. I need, I need Hobie to take it. That's a good question. I just, I just sent it to a few friends. My entire team took it. The whole Slack <laughs> channel was, I'm a fox, I'm a cat. And it was very eye opening to hear what people were. Oh, I was surprised by it. it was really fun. But the way you worded the questions were very inviting, conversational, really fun. Like you asked one deep question, and that deep question was like, okay. I'm going to go deep here for a minute. Like you warned all of us, which is really fun as well. So you, okay, so you made this up, meaning you didn't yeah. hire someone to help you put it together. You sat yeah. around with a small team and just said like, let's talk about this, ideate about it. So to keep it simple, you wrote the quiz, you put it together, you used the software for your quiz. Yeah. 
And then what happened? First off, I changed the caption okay. on the reel that was going viral. Said comment quiz. We're, we're linking this all to many chat. It's going automatically. There's no way that I could keep up with this traction. And pushing those comments further, pushing that engagement metric is really just going to push this reel further. So I actually had 5 million views before I ever got the quiz done. Okay, time so, out. Time yeah. out. I got to stop you. You made a reel. And was that the reel where you were telling everyone you thought you were a fox, but you were really a bunny? Yes. Okay, so you did this random reel, and I'm going to random reel each of the reels in my show notes so they can see what you yes. did, if you're cool with that. Okay, so in the first one, you did this, you got, it just took off because there was curiosity. People didn't even know what a fox or a bunny was, but they kind of made these interpretations. They wanted more. So that just virally took off. You were not expecting that. Virally took off. It was, it was all jumping on this opportunity. Okay, this That's is it. so cool. But here's what I love what you did. You thought, okay, wait a second, I'm going to make a quiz and then I'm going to go back and you actually change the caption of the mm -hmm. reel. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. So good. So you just monopolized on something that was already working. I'm really into scrappy people, people that are like, <laughs> wait a second, something's working here. What could I do to get the most out of that? And you jump to it. You didn't think it's going to take me a month to create a quiz. I need to do this. You just did it scrappy, probably not perfect, but you did it. And so then you change the caption and then people could DM you. What word were they DMing you? Quiz. Quiz. Keep it simple. <laughs> <laughs> you I know what? I start. did actually have a many chats expert on the back end start to set up all of the automations as well. So Great. it will pop up with, hey, this is a bot. You said the word quiz. Before I get into this, are you a business owner, a creator, or neither? And at that point, I'm also able to segment all of this and start to get more information. Because what I've really created with this archetype, I was talking to a copywriter about this. She's like, you are a copywriter's dream. You created four archetypes that you've labeled you that we can now friend. write for. Yes. That's huge. You literally now have an email list knowing what these people are about could be segmented out into four different groups. That is gold. That person was right for sure. So you found out, first of all, if they're a business owner, a non-business owner, did you find that the majority of people filling it out were business owners? But I heard you got some random celebrities filling this out. Oh yeah, I did. <laughs> Do we get to know who or is it a secret? Yeah, Rachel Levis. From the Scandaval oh, situation. No Vanderpump way. Rules. Okay, that yeah. is such a random one. She's a fox. <laughs> She's a fox. Interesting. Okay. If you know, you know. I've had so, a couple other bigger influencers, but I don't, no one actual celebrity. Okay. Well, I feel like big influencers could be celebrity names for sure, but you had some big names and here's the thing. These big influencers who took it, I can guarantee you they were sending it to all their friends because that's exactly sure. what I did. And I'm not a big influencer. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I probably send it to 20 people. So, mm -hmm. cause it's so fun. That's the thing. And you said this in the very beginning that I actually need to take this as a lesson. So you just taught me something. I don't think a lot of my quizzes are fun and like mm. whimsical. And here's the point I want everyone to hear. I don't have a brand that's just fun and whimsical and there's a lot behind it, but so is yours. You have a really beautiful message behind yours, but the front facing is easy, light, fun, mm -hmm. curious, but the back is very insightful and people can use it in their businesses and in their personal life. I just want to make that distinction. You're doing that right where I don't think I've really, really knocked that part out of the park. So I'm going to take that. You'll see my next quiz is going to be more fun. <laughs> so, I can't wait to okay. see it. I cannot wait either. So I can't wait for my team to listen to this. Okay. So you did one reel, but then you reworked the reel. What happened reworked after it. that? Okay. Then I had to launch the actual quiz. Okay. So I posted my next reel that said, POV, 5 million people thought you were trying to label all women as a fox, cat, bunny, deer by their appearance. But it's actually a tool to ditch the societal rules and show up as the complex person you are. There's a reason you're drawn to one. So I made a quiz. Okay. First of all, you are a copywriter. You're not a copywriter's dream. <laughs> are a copywriter. And wow. And two, I could see why you did that. But talk to me about like, why did you take that POV? Why did you do it that way? 
So the comment section on this first reel, this is why it blew up. I can actually explain the virility of this first Good. reel. And it has very little to do with the bunny cat fox deer thing. It actually has to do with the fact that the first thing out of my mouth was I'm having an existential crisis. <laughs> and the whole internet goes, she doesn't even know what an existential crisis is. And I was like, okay, go on, misunderstand me. Keep it coming. Keep on. Keep it coming. Comments. It I love them. <laughs> the third thing out of my mouth was exactly what I told you. You don't need to know what these are. Whatever you're assuming is correct. And so from there, the comment section piled up with comments about, you know, you're trying to box in women, you're trying to do all of this stuff. And honestly, I let them misunderstand me. I think there is this openness that you have to have when it comes to virility. You have to be open to misunderstanding. And that's not saying that you have to be polarizing or controversial. It means you have to make way for the question so that you can answer it later. And if we're so anticipatory that we answer every single question, they're not going to keep looking. So you have to add in those gaps. Okay. I'm kind of blown away right now because <laughs> you are so right. Now, did you get nervous with the negativity? Like I'm a sensitive person. So oh, people course. are like, you misunderstand or you're trying to label all women. I'd freak out. I'd probably be like, take it down. I'm not that person. You didn't feel like you needed to defend yourself. Where does that come from? Is this Oh, I did. I did. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Don't Talk worry. Don't about. worry. Okay. I definitely felt like I needed to defend myself. And actually, I mean, this has been a whole massive challenge for me. So I'll tell you a secret, which I feel a little bit like I shouldn't be telling you, but I'm gonna, we're, we're friends. I'm going to tell you anyway. Okay. <laughs> so the sending of the emails to these people has been the most stressful part. Because the growth, it's there. The people, the eyes, it's there. But what happens when I go in with the next part? That's the fear of failure that I'm really feeling. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm being hit with. So I've had to really wrap my brain around, it's okay. If 20,000 people leave this email list, that is okay. I've done my job. You were nervous about sending the you're a fox email or emails to the follow. next the to next follow. which would be maybe hey buy from me Literally. or no <laughs> yeah okay gotcha let's talk about that I know we're all over the place but I said this in the intro this is impromptu I didn't get to talk to you first <laughs> I didn't get your questionnaire so this is very different for me but we're gonna I was like talking to a good girlfriend about oh my gosh tell me everything and so that's what this episode is about <laughs> So what is that email? So I got the email that said that I'm a cat and it explained yep. it. Also, I've got some notes and I want to go to this really quickly because I didn't expect you to remember this off the top of your head, but I liked a lot of what I saw. So I'm going to go back for a second. The quiz, oh. you don't even have a real title for this quiz. Would you agree? No. <laughs> okay. I thought that was really interesting. So at the top so of the scrappy. quiz, it's so good. <laughs> scrappy is our middle name here. So it says, are you a bunny, deer, cat, or fox? And then underneath that is a pop-up on our website. It says, my secret for attracting the community you want is far less serious than you'd think. Match your inner archetype with how others perceive you to watch the magic flow. And that's where you've got people can sign up for the quiz. And then from there, I received an email and this might've been, this actually might've been your selling email. I just want to read what it says because I think it's so smart. You said, I hate when people use, I grew 7,000 followers in seven days clickbait, but I did grow 7K in seven days for being more bunny. Literally, yes, after a two-year plateau, mind you. It wasn't trending audio, seven-second looping videos, and annoying read more in the caption hooks. It was the process of learning more about who I am and how I brighten people's days. So we are collectively so gosh darn blind to our strengths. That was just a little bit of your email. You're such a great writer, my friend. Did you, <laughs> Thank did you, you. study copywriting or is it just part of who you are? I just see people for who they are and <laughs> I just speak to them. <laughs> it's a beautiful thing and it's very Thank obvious. You. So that was part of that email. And then I, th is that an email where you sold? I wouldn't Linked say so. something. Okay. But I guess I'll go back to my original question. Yeah. What were you selling off the back end of the quiz? So off the back end of the quiz, I'm really leading into 
a program that hasn't even launched yet. So that's where scrappy. I know a program that hasn't even launched yet. So what I did was I got people into new podcast. I sent them this PDF that included some of the animal breakdown. So if you feel like you're Loved between that. two, you can dive into it more. You can look into it at your own speed. And then we're going to see what happens. <laughs> okay, great. So you're thinking you're going to create something to sell to them. You're just not ready yet. It is. It's coming in the next it's coming. couple of weeks. Oh, she's being cagey, <laughs> my friends, as she should be, because this is her business. This is stuff she's working on now. I want to really point out some themes that are coming out of this very impromptu interview. Number one, scrappiness. You have done such a great job of, holy cow, something great just happened here. I'm going to take advantage of it. I'm going to get this done really quickly. You did the quiz. And then you didn't necessarily know exactly what you were going to sell to them when this quiz kind of took off, but you quickly figured it out. So you're working on something behind the scenes. So anyone who fills out the quiz, you'll learn about it later on. Another thing is you learn to have thicker skin. So people were saying you're labeling women. This is not a good idea or whatever the negativity, not all of it was negative, but you got some and I'm assuming you just kind of went with it. You didn't jump in to defend yourself or did you? Good question. I wouldn't say I jumped in to defend myself. I jumped in to divert a little bit. So okay. I had a lot of people that were saying, you know, you're putting beauty standards on women. We don't need another box. And that one hits me a little bit. Yeah, because that's not that, what you're doing. Yeah, that one yeah. hits me in the soul because it's the opposite of what I'm doing. Right. And those are the, always the hardest, right? When you're just so blatantly misunderstood and the person is also so committed to misunderstanding you. Mm -hmm. And that's the core of this is that they are always going to be committed to misunderstanding you. So however far I go, however I throw in detail, logic, facts, doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They aren't showing up in my comment section and adding a snarky remark to learn something. Right. They're just not. So the most that I can do is say, which is why I created a fun personality test, fairy emoji. Like that's, <laughs> that's the right. best I can do here. Right. Okay. So that makes sense. So you did get in those comments, but you weren't like, oh my gosh, this is, that's not what I meant. You all are wrong. Or you didn't make a big deal of it, but I love, and I will link to it. I love that second reel where you kind of called it out a little bit. And so you made that known. And that second reel was also to get more people to take the quiz. That's yep. when it officially launched with that second reel. Okay. Yeah. And then from there, I said, okay, this has been a good amount of time. I've already posted all of the animal archetypes. I've already posted a podcast episode on this. I posted the things that I need to have posted. So let's say it again, because it's been a month now. And that is not too soon to repeat yourself. No. So I made another reel actually with Rachel Levis's comment. Okay. And I said, oh my God, I am fangirling. <laughs> we need to talk about this. Recap. All girls are either bunnies, cats, foxes, or deer. And this matters because 70% of people are blind to their biggest strength. Internet fact. <laughs> Do what? I know that that's true? Don't know. But also, does it matter? It's one thing that I'm saying on the internet. I said, according to the internet, 70% of people are blind to their own strengths. But when you make your inside and your outside match, it just works. It just clicks. So I made a quiz, which again, I'm pulling back to this, like, find out what you are, find out what you are, stop guessing, find out what you are. It's just that simple. Yes. You know, you said something earlier, you said it's not that deep. And I love this. So I don't know if you know, but Mel Robbins, she's a good friend of mine. She's got this huge podcast. She recently came out on the internet with a story that she was saying about her daughter. And she said, my daughter taught me something I want to teach all of you. And she said, when you're going for a job interview and you're freaked out and you're so nervous, 
Tell yourself, it's not that deep. It's just an interview. It's just a resume. Or if you're wanting to lose weight and you have a long way to go, tell yourself, it's not that deep. It's just a walk today. And this idea of it's not that deep takes off so much of the stress of it. And so I feel like in general, you have this mentality of it's not that deep. And I love that about you. And two, you made a quiz that made us feel like, look, it doesn't have to be that deep. And you can learn a lot about yourself. So my friend, you're winning. You're winning right now. (laughs) You're doing many things right, as you already know. You don't need me to tell you that, but it's really exciting. So you did these three reels. And how long ago was that? When did all of this start? When did you do that second reel where it was like official? Is it over a month ago? And that's okay if you don't have an exact date, but are we talking... Not too long ago, I guess. We're talking like eight weeks ago. Okay. So about two months ago is when this all kind of exploded. So Mm -hmm. what did you think when you were starting to get all those leads? Like what was going through your head? Well, number one, it was don't become the bunny fox cat deer girl. Don't become the box. Tell me more about that. Because For me, I put myself in so many boxes, as I'm sure many listeners have. You search, you hunt for that label that fits correctly, and then you grasp on for dear life. And I did not want this to be that. So really, my biggest spiral (laughs) between that first reel and now is, how do I shift this into my business? How do I take this like through line and pull it out, draw it out so that it makes sense with everything else that I do. Because yes, I understand the through line, but I need to make that so crystal clear to someone that's just finding me that this is not about your face. This is not about how you look. This is not even about like a silly little quiz. It's about getting to know yourself more clearly, pulling back the layers so that you can worry less about perception. Yes. That's the bigger message of all of this. So if you don't want to be known as the bunny, cat, fox, deer girl, who do you want to be known as? Oh, don't ask a bunny that question. (laughs) (laughs) Such a perfect answer from you. I love it. I mean, there's so much, right? You know what? It's really that I want to be known as the girl that will hand you the mic. And I think that is what is so important with my platform and everything that I'm doing is that as women, we feel like we need to say it right. We need to say it well. We can't say like too many times. We have to show up intelligently. So we come up as capable, respectable. We need to burn out because we are doing so many things on our list. And I don't think that we actually need to add more. We can actually do less be exactly who we are and still deserve that mic. Oh, amen, my friend. I can't believe how you and I are so much alike in our messaging. I'm a big proponent of do less and make more, more impact, more happiness, more Mm. freedom, more money. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that's a great thing to be known for sure. Okay, so you did this quiz. We're gonna tell everyone where to go to take advantage of it, but that's not what this episode is about. It's not just to get more quit. You've got a lot of people that subscribe to this quiz. (laughs) but there's nothing wrong with more. However, I would love for you to give some tips and and remember this is very impromptu. So it's okay if you don't have anything prepared, but a lot of people are listening. And what you might not know about my audience is that they are all online business owners or aspiring to be. And they all know that you need an email list for your business to thrive. I'm just Mm -hmm. a big proponent of that. It makes everything easier in your business when you have a list and you're not only using social, but Social is such a great way to grow your audience, get your message out there and grow your email list. So can you think of some tips that you would tell your students around social media, how to embrace it, what's working now, what to pay attention to? You are a social media expert and I'd love some of your tips if you wouldn't mind sharing those. Absolutely. I think the biggest thing in social media and where I see people flop really is that being anticipatory thing. We are so anticipatory with not only am I going to tell you the what, I'm going to tell you the three-step how. Cut Mm -hmm. it. Cut it. Let them ask. Let them ask the question. We are so nosy on the internet. So what would happen if you just talked about that hill that you'll die on today? You know, let it be that simple. Let it be easy. 
because I know that every one of your listeners has a lot of big, bold ideas in their brain. They are amazing at the impact that they are making with their clients. That's, you know, non-negotiable, but then getting on social seems to be really hard. Yes. So how can we pull back the layers of what social means? Pull it back, make it just that simple as talking to your audience. Without necessarily giving them all the answers. Yeah. Let them ask. Let it be a conversation. I love that. Fantastic. What platform are you most active on? Oh, Instagram, for sure. Okay. So do you feel that at this moment in time, reels are definitely worth people's time? Yes or no? Absolutely. Yes. What do you think makes a really great reel? Beyond die on the hill, don't give them all the answers. I love that strategy. What what else is working in reels? Because my students really struggle. They struggle to show their face on camera. Mm -hmm. They struggle to come up with ideas. Mm -hmm. They don't feel, a lot of my audience is older than you as well. So they're like, I didn't grow up with social media. I'm not going to dance on social media. What what am I doing here? What would you say to them about reels? I would say that I would ask, why, why is that wisdom that you have with your clients not worthy for social media content? I, I think that's the biggest question. I yeah. wish it was, honestly, I wish it was harder than that. <laughs> right, right. And I, I got asked a question about this the other day. I was like, no, here's what you're going to do. You're going to pull a Gen Z move. You're going to prop your phone up against whatever counter in your house, a water bottle. You're going to press record and you're going to talk to your phone for three to five minutes. Simple as that. Three okay. to five minutes, talk. Because okay. the first thing that you say, never going to be the hook. It is never going to be the most genius thing that comes out of your mouth. Never, ever. So true. So take that five minute video, allow it to be five minutes, allow yourself to pause, allow yourself to think. It will come out in that video and then go splice it up. Then make it 30 seconds. Okay. I like that because if you only tell yourself, I can only talk for 30 seconds. Oh, that is so stressful. I can't right. film an Instagram. Are you kidding? The the 60 second time clock. I'm like, <laughs> yes, that is such a great tip. Okay. Another thing is, you know, on your second reel, you did a POV. Yeah. Okay. That's a trend. So if, if people don't know, it will just like say POV for point of view. And then you kind of make a statement. So that is a trendy thing. How do my listeners find out what is trending? And do you agree that if you kind of jump on a trend, that could be valuable? What if I tell you I haven't followed a trend in a year. (laughs) You have too many ideas in your head. I think you're a creator, not a consumer. Take on that role and create what you feel inspired to create. I think that we overemphasize this hard and fast consistency. Post 30 reels in 30 days, post multiple times a day, do a lot, be a lot. What if we actually worried about frequency a little bit more? Let me throw a little okay. <laughs> Talk to me. A little knife in this. So, what if you allowed your inspiration to flow? And the day that you have three ideas, because I know that there are those days, you post them all in one day. Scandalous. Three I, in one day. Revolutionary. <laughs> revolutionary. Post them all in one day. Next day you have no ideas. Too bad. So sad. Okay, so it doesn't matter. You're a rule breaker. You're not someone that's like, I'm following all these rules. This is the process I go by. You just kind of go with what's working for you in that moment. Social media is about connection. And I have had too many clients with hundreds of thousands of followers who break every single rule in the book. So why use them? Yes. You're so <laughs> why right. why pick a pick up a rule and hold tight to that rule? when it's not actually necessary and it's so hard in your life. I have a mom client who has grown about 100K in the last year and she has two under three, I believe. And I asked her, when do you post? Like, what's your ideal posting time? And she was like, really, I have two little kids. I I post when I can. I post when I can. I don't even know. I don't care. The best time is when I can. Yes. I I want everyone to feel that way. Post when you can. 
Okay. This is so good, Harley. I love hearing from you. You are a new friend of mine. And believe me, you've got a big fan in me because I just love how your brain works and you're a go-getter. You're scrappy. Like I said, I'm really excited to start following you and see what you do. So I'm glad we got introduced. Before I let you go, two things. I know we've talked about it, but I want to kind of put a bow on this. In your own words, as a social media expert and influencer, Mm -hmm. why do you think this quiz works so well? And in a way, I want you to answer in a way to say, to help other people maybe find that secret sauce for them as well. So this quiz works because it's a choose your own adventure game. It feels easy. It feels casual. I don't hit you with anything salesy. You cannot connect the dots between my products and bunny cat deer fox. True. You're so <laughs> you right. You literally can't. You literally can't. And the first time you hear me talk about it is actually on that landing page. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to hit you in the soul on that landing page. I'm going to make you feel something. Yes. I'm going to make you feel. And that is my job is to get you to the landing page and make you feel seen. The number of people that I've had that came to me after the quiz and were like, oh my God, I took this for fun and now I'm crying. (laughs) Perfect, good. We want everyone crying. Check. Check, we did our job. I totally agree with you. 100% you hit it on the head. That is why this quiz works. And that is something that is a formula. You can figure that out. We could break all the rules, but there's a strategy behind that. Absolutely. Yeah, and I think it's really smart. And I will absolutely be using this this concept for my next quiz for sure. So I'm really excited about it. it. So speaking of being so excited to take your quiz, my audience wants to take your quiz. So where do they go? What do they do to learn more about you and find out if they are a deer, fox, bunny, or cat? Yes, absolutely. So I've made this super easy. You're just going to go to my profile, the Harley Jordan on On Instagram. Instagram. Okay. On Instagram. You can comment quiz on any of my reels and it will end up straight in your DMs so that you can learn more, hear more and figure out what animal you are. Fantastic. Thanks again, Harley. I'm so excited that I got to know you even more now. We are going to be fast friends, just so you know, you're not going to get rid of me. And I'm just so impressed with all you've done. So congratulations on your success. Thank you so much for having me. So there you have it. I hope you love this impromptu interview. If you liked it more than my other ones, will you jump on Instagram and let me know? Because, you know, I'm a little bit more buttoned up. I like to be prepared. I like to be professional. That's just who I am to my core, probably my cat-like ways. But also, I like to challenge myself and not have all the things prepared and just be myself and ask the questions I would ask for my own business. And you got to kind of see behind the scenes through this episode of what I would ask someone if I was wanting to get information for my next quiz. So I asked all the questions that are literally going to help me with my next quiz. And I'm curious if you liked the way I did this. So, you know, I'm just at Amy Porterfield on Instagram, jump into my DMs, let me know what you thought. And if you didn't like it, I want to know that too. I promise I won't get my feelings hurt. I just want to know. Okay, so the three reels will be linked to in the show notes. And of course, a link to the quiz if you haven't done so already. And if you want to tell me if you are a cat, deer, fox, or bunny, and what you think about that when you get your results, jump over to Instagram and tell me as well. All right, my sweet friends, thanks so much for tuning in. Can't wait to connect again soon. Bye for now. 